Let's talk about a problem we all experience when we try to watch TV in a foreign language. We don't understand what we hear. It's probably one of the biggest things I struggled with when I first started learning English. I would turn on a show in English, I would start watching it, but then the problem was I could not recognize the words, the words the actors were saying without turning on the subtitles. And for me at that time, it was a big problem because I thought that I was supposed to understand every single movie, every single TV show without any subtitles because I had an opinion that using subtitles was a bad thing. Now I really think that subtitles can help you improve your listening skills. At least they really helped me. They really helped me start understanding more words in English and I'm using the same approach right now while learning Spanish. So this video will be a reflection of my personal experience. All the shows and movies that I watched and all the different things that helped me improve my listening skills and my listening comprehension. So why was it so hard for me at the very beginning to understand TV and movies in English? And why is it hard for you guys? So I have discovered that the one thing that I struggle with the most is the speed and pronunciation because native speakers talk extremely fast. And when you're just learning the language, especially when you have just started learning this language, it's really hard for you because they're talking so fast and you have no idea what they're saying, they are blending all the words together, you have no idea what's going on, and obviously as a language learner, you just feel very confused. Native speakers in movies and TV shows often speak at a natural, conversational pace, which is usually significantly faster than what we're used to. This rapid pace can make it difficult for us language learners to catch individual phrases or maybe words and understand different nuances nuances and pronunciation. So how did I fix this problem? What did I do when I was watching a show and I couldn't understand anything because the actors there were speaking too fast? Well, in reality, I just stopped watching that show because at the very beginning, I understood that I was not going to be able to understand everything and especially I was not going to be able to understand native speakers as easily. So what I did was I just went to YouTube and instead at the very beginning, I just watched a lot of educational YouTube videos, obviously also by native speakers or by people who have a very good level in this language, but for me it was important to watch something more so educational, maybe like uh, a story, like a person is telling you a story but then they share all the vocabulary, they maybe explain like a grammar rule, and this way I was actually learning, because when I was watching shows and movies, I was realizing that the level was a little bit too high for me. So I think it's also important to understand that sometimes you will probably have to stop watching something just because it's a little bit too hard, but it doesn't mean that you will never be able to watch the show. No, you can make this your goal. For example, right now my goal is to read a whole book in Spanish, like a book for adults in Spanish. And I know that my level is maybe not that high to be able to accomplish this goal right now, but I know that one day I will do it. And for me to be able to do it, I have established a system of, oh, let me read this short articles for non-native speakers, or let me read this book, which is a lot easier for me and I can understand it a lot better. And basically this way I built out this system for myself, a system of just watching YouTube videos, watching educational content on YouTube in this language, and then slowly but surely I was increasing my vocabulary, I was watching more and more complicated videos, and then one day I was like, you know what, I think I'm ready to watch Friends. Because believe it or not guys, but Friends is actually a hard show. I feel like a lot of people always recommend Friends as like the first TV show you should watch in English, but I think it's pretty challenging, at least this was my experience. At the very beginning, you know, all the actors there were speaking extremely fast for me. They were using a lot of slang and I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, and that's why I decided to 
pause for a second and just go to YouTube and continue watching educational videos. So now we're slowly moving on to the second reason why it was hard for me to understand shows or movies in English. It's because usually actors there use a lot of idioms and slang, and it's not something that you're gonna learn super fast. TV shows and movies often incorporate different idioms and slang that you're honestly not taught in your traditional language class. And they can be pretty perplexing for many language learners because sometimes we'll look at this expression and we're like, what does it mean? You know, I have no idea. I need to Google it, I need to memorize it, and only later I will be able to actually use it myself. And it's totally okay. I just want to let you know that this is something that I experienced too in the past, and obviously right now my English is a lot better. I know a lot of expressions, a lot of idioms in English, so you can do the same thing. I feel like now I'm struggling with this problem a lot in Spanish because my level in Spanish is not that high yet. And so every time somebody is using an expression, I'm like, what does it mean? Oh my God, it's another idiom or, you know, it's like slang and I'm like, no, it's too hard. I don't understand. Can you please not use slang? But in reality, they can't. Like, that's the truth about how native speakers speak the language. They always use slang, they always use idioms. And for us language learners, the difficulty is knowing which idioms are actually useful and which slang to actually learn. So how did I fix this problem? First of all, every time I was watching a show in English, I made sure I used subtitles, subtitles in English. For example, if I was watching something in English, I used English subtitles. Right now, when I'm watching something in Spanish, I use Spanish subtitles. My experience when it comes to using subtitles is that they help me a lot because this way I could see all of those expressions and idioms I wanted to learn later on. So I would be watching a show and then I would see a phrasal verb in English, for example. I would pause, I would make sure I understood the meaning of this phrasal verb. If I didn't, I would Google what it meant and then maybe I would create a flashcard for myself to later memorize this phrasal verb. Because at the end of the day, if this is something that you actually need and this is something that native speakers regularly use, if you consume content in this language, you will come across this word time and time again. But obviously providing the fact that you actually consume a lot of content in this language because oftentimes we get lazy, we get busy, and we practice languages only once a week, which is definitely not enough. And when it comes to tackling the challenges of understanding TV shows and movies in foreign languages, there's one platform that helped me so much and I am still an active user of this platform. It is called LingoPy. It is designed specifically for language learners who want to watch movies and TV shows and improve their language skills this way. With LingoPy, you're not just learning, you're delving into the heart of real native conversations, slang, street language, and popular culture. On their platform, you have the chance to learn Spanish, French, Italian, German, Portuguese, Russian, Korean, and Japanese. Their content is extremely interesting and it includes various genres from comedy to romance, mystery to drama, and everything in between. But what I love about LingoPie the most is their interactive features. The show I'm currently watching on LingoPie is called Special Mexican Food Tour and I love it a lot. You can watch your favorite show with interactive subtitles that provide instant translations with a mere click on unfamiliar words. And what's even better is that their built-in flashcards and auto-generated quizzes help me internalize what I've learned. It's like turning your language learning into a game, reinforcing vocabulary and phrases effortlessly. I always tell you guys how flashcards have changed my life and that's also why I love LingoPie because if I don't know a word, I can just click on it and I can create a flashcard. And I can review all of these flashcards after I finish watching an episode of my favorite show. So LingoPie can really help you save a lot of time and effort. And only for you guys, LingoPie is offering a seven-day free trial with an exclusive 55% discount for a limited time. Just follow the link in my description and watch shows and movies with the help of LingoPie. The next thing I struggle with is the fact that when you're watching a show, there are usually people who have a lot of different accents and dialects. And for a language learner, it's kind of hard to understand 
all the differences and all the words. We all know that many languages have multiple regional accents and dialects, and it makes it harder to comprehend the spoken language. Even native speakers can struggle with understanding unfamiliar accents. So guys, as language learners, we just have to relax, breathe out, and I feel like a lot of people are just way too harsh on themselves. Yes, you don't understand this accent, and now what? It's not the end of the world. You can always practice, it can always improve, and yeah, and then you will be able to understand this accent. So how did I fix this problem? To be completely honest, what I actually did from the very beginning is I only focused on one accent. I feel like it's not something that a lot of people recommend. Usually people always tell you, try to surround yourself with a lot of different accents and dialects and everything. But for me, I'm a language learner and I feel like I just feel overwhelmed, especially at the very beginning when my level is not too high yet. For example, it's something that I'm experiencing with Spanish right now. If I were to follow this advice of, uh, you know, surrounding myself with a lot of different accents and dialects, I would probably quit because I would realize the Spanish is way too complicated, but that's not my goal. I don't want to quit. So I decided to only focus on Mexican Spanish for now, because I live in Mexico and that's my priority. Because in truth, the more you practice the language, you know, the higher your level gets, the more confident you will feel. You will feel like you're ready to expose yourself to a different accent and try something new, but not at the very beginning. Just, you know, relax a little bit. Stick to one accent. With English, what I did is I decided to stick to the American English. I decided to master the pronunciation. I mean, I'm still trying to do it even to this very day because I'm not a native speaker. But anyway, I focused on the American accent because it's something that I wanted to work on. I started watching a lot of movies and shows where people only spoke with American English because that was my focus. And then after I started speaking better, after I improved my listening skills, I was like, you know what? I think it's time for me to listen to British English right now. And then, oh, a whole new level of difficulty began. But I was ready for it, and that's the most important thing. The next difficulty with movies and shows is cultural context and references. Movies and TV shows often include cultural references that are very specific to the country or even region where this content was produced. And obviously, as language learners, we're often not familiar with this region or country because we just didn't grow up there. And because of that, we might miss out on a lot of jokes and puns and cultural references. In reality, it's actually pretty hard to fix this issue because basically fixing this whole problem would mean that you have to learn everything about this culture. And it's quite difficult to do if, again, your parents are not from this country, you were not raised in that country, you never traveled to that country before, you never lived there before, but it's possible. The first time I traveled to an English-speaking country, I was 20 years old. And by that age, I could already speak English pretty well. And I knew some things about, you know, the American culture, for example. Obviously, I was not like super advanced. I didn't know everything, but I knew some things. So how did I learn those things? First of all, I was watching all the shows that Americans were talking about at that very moment. If I saw online that this show is very popular in the... Alexa, stop. If I saw online that this show was very popular in the United States, for example, I was like, I have to watch it. I have to figure out what the show is about. I have to familiarize myself with you know, the show and the content of the show. Because to be honest, what really shapes the culture is a lot of things. It's the history of this country. It's, you know, it's like cultural things like music and books and movies. And you can't like learn everything, but you can kind of give yourself this goal of focusing on one thing at a time. So first it was like, okay, I want to watch this show. And then it was like, oh, I want to watch this movie because it's a classic. And then it was like, oh, maybe I should listen to these songs, at least for a little bit, because I know that they are extremely popular among Americans. But I think what really helped me here is just realizing that I'm a person from a different culture and it's absolutely okay. There are going to be jokes that I am not going to be able to understand and it's okay 
but I will learn all of those things and my language skills will become better. And on this note, I would like to wrap up this YouTube video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget that if you like watching movies and shows in foreign languages, you absolutely have to give LingoPy a try. It's an amazing platform and I use it almost every single day to study Spanish right now. Remember, they have a lot of languages there, so make sure to click the link below and check them out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video.